Welcome everybody. I'm Molly Simpson here to share with you a little bit about contacting and inviting just as way of uh, protocol just to let you know that we are a group of independent consultants not affiliated with Niken Incorporated and the views opinions expressed are solely those of the presenters. <laughs> so with that said, um, Joining me today is one of my favorite people and mentors, John Atherton, my, also my father, and he's got a gift for contacting and inviting, so you are looking at a great treat ahead. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. We'll, we'll go through a, a more formal presentation and then open up for a little bit more conversation. So this is questions of a lot of people in Niken. How, so now you've, you've got down, you know you want to do Niken, you love what you're learning, you're, you're using the products and having some great benefits there, but how in the world do you open up and talk to, to people about this? Maybe it's your family, maybe it's your friends, um, but that's really where we start is the developing your skills in relationship-centered marketing. Oh, that didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to use a different button. So, um, Dad, John, I know that you are a pro at this. When, when you uh, are approaching people, um, do you just go out and say, hey, I wanna show you something fantastic. What, how do you start? How do you? Uh... Well, Molly, it's a great question. The, the first thing you need to do is establish some kind of relationship. And uh, if you walk up to somebody and say, hey, I've got some great magnetic insoles I think you ought to buy, they're going to run the other direction because they don't know anything about what you have to offer and they don't really have any trust for you as an individual. So I guess the first thing is you kind of friend them, become friends with them, not Facebook friends, but real friends where you're face to face and visiting with them. Um, how does that happen? Uh, you know, it's, it's become second nature to me over the years. Um, I can establish a conversation pretty quickly with people I don't know, uh, which has been a wonderful blessing in my life. I've uh, been able to, to find people that, that I would not have normally contacted or been involved with. I'll give you a classic example. We were uh, last year heading into the San Antonio conference. We stopped at a Costco on the way in and we met a couple that were there watching the Vitamix demonstration. And in a matter of just two or three minutes, uh, we became good friends. Um, it was not the kind of person I would normally approach. He had tattoos everywhere. Not that tattoos are a bad thing, but I don't normally mix and mingle with, with biker types, if you will. <laughs> and that's a terrible way to look at it. But, but in, in just a matter of a few minutes, I liked his personality. I liked that he was responding to the, the display guy, the, the demonstrator of the Vitamix. And uh, before we left, they uh, agreed to come and be a part of the convention with us. And it was just a, a matter of uh, getting to know him, what his interests were, what kinds of things he liked to do. Uh, he shared with me that he had bought one of the Vitamixes the, the day previous, got it home, and, and there was a part missing. So he had to come all the way back to Costco. And I said, that, that's a pain in the neck. But I said, if you hadn't done that, we wouldn't have had a chance to meet. And he quickly agreed with me, and we just had fun. Uh, we left San Antonio uh, having established a new friendship. They actually took us to a, a great barbecue place almost to uh, Austin, Texas. And uh, it was an open pit barbecue place that was is internationally known. I'd never heard of it before. But great barbecue. We had a lot of fun. Got a chance to meet them. So I, I guess the process is just be friendly. And um, in this world today, it's hard to find good, friendly people. But they're there, and they respond very quickly when you, are, you approach as a friend. Right. And I, I tell people all the time when I'm teaching them how to talk to people, I said, don't ever talk to strangers about Niken. Never. Yeah. You know, learn that lesson. Don't talk to strangers. Remember what your parents taught you. Don't talk to strangers. Very but good. Your goal is to make a friend as quick as possible. And then you can talk to your friends about Niken. That's right. 
It's a great way to approach it. And I love this slide The you know, people only want to listen to this one radio station, WIIFM. What's in it for me? That's and right. That's from your prospects perspective. I, I like how, you know, you approach this, this man with interest in what he was interested in talking about the Vitamix and, you know, paying attention to what his interests were. And then you were able to establish quite a great relationship. And that's really what it's about is those great relationships. And the what's in it for me, that is the key in advertising. Uh, if you listen to any advertising commercial that's out there, uh, they are trying to, to draw you in with what's in it for you. That's their approach. And it may be that they want to uh, uh, tickle your fancy about high-end quality cars. Or it may be that they, you're interested in, in that wonderful milkshake that's being portrayed. Or it may be uh, some kind of place to live. Uh, there are a number of ways that advertisers, and if you start listening to the advertising, you understand what their, what their motives are in drawing you into their, uh, their advertising. But that with them, what's in it for me? I learned that, Molly, back in 1980-81 from uh, George Carlin. Uh, not the comedian George Carlin, but the man that I worked for with the Creative Circle. Uh, he said, anything you do needs to have a whiffum. And I thought, whiffum, what are you talking about? And that's what he's talking about. What's in it for me? Go ahead. Awesome. Well, and taking that into account, I know you kind of do this, like you said, as second nature. My, my dad's one of those people that's an unconscious competent. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's naturally very great at this and not exactly sure when he, you have to tell someone else how to do it. It kind of, you kind of have to go, well, how do I do that? <laughs> and uh, this, this is one of the things that, that can help um, the different personality types. And um, we've heard it, the color code, we've heard type A personalities, there's energy typing. I mean, there's all kinds of, of categorizing of people, but this, this particular format is really helpful in a business setting uh, because you'll know what language appeals using like with a controller you would talk about um being being your own boss or um taking charge of your own health care um not being in the the power of other people you're not at the mercy of other people and other people's schedules and that kind of thing and by the way how do you find that out you you ask them so what are you into what what do you enjoy doing what uh, where are you employed and, and do you enjoy your job so they will reveal to you, as you ask those kinds of questions, what their personality traits are. Great point. And I, a lot of times it's tempting to go with one of those uh, hats with the double brims and a magnifying glass, you know? I yeah. feel like yeah. we're kind of like detectives. We have to go in there seeking for their needs. What, what are they looking for? And you have to kind of play a detective game and ask those great questions like you just did and find out, what what personality type are they? Uh, what are their needs? What motivates them? Figure all of those things out so that when you're speaking to them, you're meeting those needs. Uh, you've got to find the hot buttons. So yeah. how would you approach a promoter? If you were, first of all, how would you figure out they were a promoter by talking to them? And then how would you approach them? Their, their level of enthusiasm for whatever they're doing. Um, uh, maybe they maybe they would share with me that they just got through seeing the latest Star Wars movie, and it was amazing. Or they got a chance to watch uh, Zoology or whatever the whatever the film of the day is. Or maybe they're sharing with you that uh, you're at In-N-Out Burger in Southern California and they're raving about how wonderful a hamburger is. They are promoting, and and they may not even know they're promoting, but that's what they do. And so you you say you know, I love your personality. I, I, you're the kind of people I like to associate with. I'm a promoter too. I enjoy, but I'm also analytical. <laughs> I'm also very controlling sometimes. I've got all those elements in me. We all do. We all carry those elements. But uh, if you're talking to a promoter, you quickly join forces with that promoter and help him understand or her how you have gotten involved in the Ken, uh, not from the standpoint of, of, um, how much money you're making because that's not interesting to them but how you're affecting the lives of people 
wow, I, you know, in just a matter of a few minutes, I have met somebody that I, I really think we're going to have a good time together. And you're going to find out what makes me tick by some wonderful products that deal with energy medicine. It's, it's the most amazing thing right now available. That kind of thing. Awesome. Awesome. So, and I wish we had time to go through all of these personality types, but this is a really helpful slide. Um, feel free to do a screenshot so you can remember there are different hot buttons. Um, what, what language will turn them off? I think all of this is really helpful and make sure you're speaking in their language. And uh, I am... Um, I, I found extreme value in using this, this chart. So let me get on to our next. Here we go. Building your list of names daily. I like this. You know, this is an ongoing thing. And, and sometimes in this industry, we have a tendency to do, um, I've heard it called all out massive action. And that's great on occasion. It's a great way to really launch momentum and contact a whole bunch of people. We have a, an ongoing thing in our group that uh, I think the, the lead right now is 52 contacts in a day. So we do that. We have, and we pass around a trophy for those that are in the lead. But what really, the power really comes in consistent action. If you're always in the spirit of finding, you're going to find people. Whatever you focus on, expand. So if you are looking for people, if you're consistently in the habit of looking for people, you're going to find them. I just read a, a, an analogy of walking with a lantern. And if your lantern isn't turned on, you're not going to draw many bugs to your insect collection. <laughs> but it's, not sure people like to be considered insects in the process. Yeah, yeah. Works. Even though there are some that bug you, right? <laughs> That's sure. That's sure. I, I was just thinking. Of, I was thinking about how this, uh, how we might make another analogy. The the idea that you are, if you want to create a diamond chip, this becomes your diamond mine. There you go. There you it's go. Where you locate your your prospective diamonds, and you're always looking. Uh, if you're doing what you sh you need to be doing, you're always looking for people that you think might want to become part of your diamond your diamond mine. Absolutely. And there's no wrong way to do it. You can find lots of people everywhere you go. You can uh, just as you're out and about doing things, but start with people. If you're just beginning this, um, start with people, you know, start, we call it a warm market. Uh, think of people. If you don't think you know a lot of people, look on your phone's contact list. Look on your Facebook friends profile. Look on your email list. You, you know hundreds of people. So start with those and just write it down. Um, and I love asking for referrals. I was in the line at Walmart yesterday and the cashier was so personable and so helpful. And, and we got in a conversation about water because I was buying some arrowhead jugs so that I could dump out the water and put back in my great pie mag waterfall water. And uh, she gave me a little tidbit. I think she was a promoter. And she said, hey, did you know you can refill? We have a refill station that's a lot cheaper and the water's pretty decent. And I said, oh, actually I make my own water and it's fantastic. And uh, it's alkaline, you know, went through some of the benefits and she goes, wow, that sounds amazing. I said, I'd be happy to give you a gallon. Really? Yeah. And she said, do you think it would help with this problem? And I said, it's worth a shot. And she goes, my mom deals with this problem. And I said, well, she can have a gallon too. And so I gave her two cards and she started doing the, she already had, gave me a referral and they're both coming next week to experience the whole knee can experience. So it's pretty exciting that it's that simple. You know, people, if you treat them as a friend, they are naturally going to want to share it with people they know and care about. What are some other ways you found helpful to build your list of names? Well, um, just you have to keep your antenna up, we say, uh, and and be aware as you're as you're walking around or driving around. Or uh, I've even uh, in a restaurant heard somebody talk about something. Uh, it's it's tuned me in, and I said, you know, I I have something I think might be of real interest to you. Uh, this is kind of an awkward place to do this, but 
if you'll give me your name and number or give me your email address, I'd like to send you a little information. I think it'll be helpful for you. And often they'll do that. Again, you don't just launch into that. It's a, a process of building a little bit of a relationship of trust. But once you've done that, and it doesn't take very long to do that, they're happy to share their email address with you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, and we, we've had fun with booths and all kinds of events. Um, and if you prefer internet marketing, that's another great venue to really gain some, some numbers in your contact list. You've, you've got a daughter, uh, Haley, who has been very effective with her social media contacts. That's another great way to do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I love this slide because I think all of us can relate. Uh, at some point in time, we've been overwhelmed by others. Uh, whether Whatever they're promoting, whatever they're excited about, sometimes it can just get, uh, we, we call it a knee can. Don't puke knee can all over everybody. You know, <laughs> you just get, go in there with your needs detective and find out what their interests are and come in as a friend. Um, what, what are some ways that you use precautions to not do this? It's, it's uh, very easy if you remember K-I-S-S. -S. Keep it simple, sweetheart. Okay? If, if, you, uh, if you try to give somebody a drink with a fire hose, it's not going to work. So you give them just a little bit of a drink, uh, whet their appetite, have them desire more, and then you add to them. I, I often talk to new distributors and I say, I, here's what I'd like to do with you. Have you ever played checkers? And they'll say, well, yeah, sure. And I'll say, I'll make the first move, and then I'll wait for you to make a move back. And as long as you're moving back, I'll know that I can continue to respond that way. But if you're overwhelmed, it's not going to work. So I, I want to just do it at your pace, whatever you feel comfortable with. Great, great analogy. I love it. And I use a similar analogy when I'm working with my people. So um, there's no wrong way to do this. Uh, you can use all means available starting today. Um, I'm venturing out being inspired by some of my group. Now I started a blog and I'm, I Skype with people in other countries that are interested. Um, there's, there's no wrong way to do this. Uh, just go out there with your heart. And a lot of people will ask me, do I lead with the products? Do I start sharing the products or do I lead with the business? What, which one should I start talking to people about? And I say, just lead with your heart. Just lead with your heart. Let them know you care about them. It's that saying, you know, no one cares how much you know until they know how much you care. That's right. That's right. I love this quote at the bottom. If a duty once begun, never leave it till it's done. Be it the duty, great or small, do it well or not at all. And we have to stink at doing something for a while until we've done enough that we get good at it. But anything worth doing well is worth doing poorly at first. You've got to learn how to do it. And thank heavens there's an infinite supply of people. So yes. don't be afraid of messing it up. Don't feel like you have to have it perfect before you start. The other thing that I would add to that, Molly, is that you can't say the wrong thing to the right person. If, if it's meant to be, you really can't say the wrong thing to the right person. They're, it's not going to, to of, offend them. Um, I, you know, you could tell them if their breath stinks, then that might not be a good way to approach. Yeah. But, but the idea of, uh, I, you know, one of the things I've used, and, and Dave Johnson is so good at this, even though he knows everything there is to know about Nick Ken, he always refers to somebody else who knows more and he involves them in a conversation, a three-way conversation with somebody else so that they can share what the product's all about because, and here's the key, if you know it all, nobody can duplicate what you're doing. Yes. But if you say, I'm not sure what the answer to that question is, hang on a second, I know somebody that does. Can you, can you wait for just a minute? And then immediately, get somebody else involved in the conversation so they can see how easy it is to do. Right. Absolutely. Great point. I think uh, we already shared that quote about no one cares. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, but start with what you're comfortable with. 
think, you know, social media and blogging and that kind of thing was not my comfort zone in starting talking to people. I love being face to face. And so I have to make a point to get out there um, and, and be around people. I have to make it a point and just, you don't really have to add anything extra to your life. Just continue on with what you do on a normal basis. I mean, going to Walmart, uh, grocery store, library, uh, I still have young children. And so I do a lot of those things that involve young children, um, church, all kinds of opportunities to share. Um, and I know dad, you're really good about when you get out there, whatever you're doing, you become a magnet for those people that are looking for solutions. We, we just have fun. Uh, you know, that's the bottom line. This is supposed to be fun. It's not supposed to be laborious. Um, and uh, there are, I, I've got lots of friends I haven't even met yet. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so that sums up our, our formal presentation. I'm going to stop the recording and, uh, we can answer some questions here. Super. Thanks for joining us.